you are watching Access LaPorte County, Channel 97. Coming up next is the September 24th, 2024 meeting of the Michigan City Planning Commission. You can find more information for this meeting by visiting www.accesslaportcounty.org. Welcome everyone in person and online to the regular meeting of the Michigan City Plan Commission, September 24, 2024. Uh, we'll, we'll begin the meeting here. We'll ask uh, Mr. York to call the roll. First. Mr. Balling. Here, online. Sorry. Mr. Dabney. Present. Mr. Connolly. Here. Mr. Domenici is absent. Mr. Granquist. Here. Mr. Hoffman. Present. Mr. Clender. Here. Ms. Tejeta. Here. And Mr. Warner. Present. We have a quorum and, uh, okay. Oh, Mr. Uh, Hale, are you here? Present. Sorry about that. Okay, next item is approval of the agenda as we have it uh, typed up. And I will make a motion to move petition 906-241 listed as a petition D on the agenda. Move that into second position after A. Move that up, that's a minor subdivision request. And we anticipate it might be a little shorter and everybody's uh, here present, I think, for the other one. So, so we'll, we'll save that the best for last year. I'll second that motion. Call the vote. Call for the vote. Mr. Balling. Yes. Mr. Connolly? Yes. Mr. Dabney? Aye. Mr. Granquist? Yes. Mr. Hoffman? Aye. Mr. Clender? Yes. Ms. Tejeta? Yes. Mr. Warner? Aye. Motion approved. The agenda is amended, is approved. Next item is approval of the minutes. We had a, a regular meeting in person and online, hybrid meeting last month. Uh, August 27, everybody's had a chance to take a look at the meeting. It was a short meeting. There's uh, any questions, revisions, or motion to approve? Motion to approve minutes. Second. Call for the vote. Mr. Balling? Yes. Mr. Connolly? Yes. Mr. Dabney? Aye. Mr. Granquist? Yes. Mr. Hoffman? Aye. Mr. Clender? Yes. Mr. Yeta? Yes. Mr. Warner? Aye. Motion approved. Yeah, the minutes have been approved from the regular meeting last month, August 27. We'll move on to the petitions and we'll call the first petition, petition P 102 24, George Zidius. Requesting to rezone from R1D to B2 for expansion of a commercial parking lot for Apex Auto Care located at a vacant lot facing South Street, situated beside 1701 Lafayette Street, also 2308 Franklin Street. Mr. York? Yes, uh, Mr. Zadius is here tonight. Um, you may recall we had some issues with um, notices in the past, but he has hit all of his notices this time. Um, and um, I'm going to hand it over to George and let him tell us about the project. Um, this came to light as Mr. Zadius had approached the planning department and wanted to do um, um, an expansion to his business there that is currently operating and I think it does pretty good business there. Um, and at that time, we started looking at the zoning and we recommended that he come in and, and rezone this to help perpetuate his business at this location, but also I'm I, in the last zoning in 2010, which I wasn't here then. I'm not sure why it got rezoned in the way that it re, it was it was rezoned. So that's why we're here today, George. The floor, George. Yeah, uh, one of the lots I bought the house. Please state your name and address for the record here. Uh, my name is George Diaz, and I've been in Michigan City for about 40 years, doing business here, also living here for 40 years. 
and uh, the address of the oh, the whole thing. Okay, I'm here to request uh, a zoning of the two parcels from the current zoning R1D to the zoning uh, designation of B2 General Commercial. The purpose of the rezoning is to extend the parking lot of Apex Auto Care. Okay, uh, do you want me to go into the legal descriptions? No, just tell us a little bit about what you're wanting to do and what the, you know, to tell us a little bit about your business, what you're wanting to do and how all this kind of came okay. out. If you will. Franklin Street, uh, it, the shop is getting a little bit busier and it's a little bit harder and to get into Frank, you know, to the shop from Franklin Street. So I want to make it kind of easier and move all the cars from the front of Franklin Street and put them in this parking lot right next to the shop on the other side. So I bought that house and the lot, the empty lot, and that's why clean the Franklin Street up and also make it more convenient to for, to turn into the shop from Franklin Street. Yeah. If you, my, Mr. President, may I add? Yes, please. If you look at the way it's situated right now, he's sitting kind of on a corner. Um, and then there's um, another pretty busy business next door, which is the Domino's, which gets through a lot of traffic as well. So it's a very tight corner. Um, he's he's it currently storing his cars um for service um it kind of it, wherever you can let's just say that i don't mean that in a very in a negative way um but his goal is to basically have move these cars off of franklin clean up the franklin street and the franklin street um uh facade and have a space to put these cars in the rear where they're not just sitting on front of yeah, we've we've driven by it many times and seen all the cars there. And it looks like good business, but you need more parking space. Thanks, sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's the short of it. You need parking space. <laughs> we have a well, uh, anything else, Mr. Zidius, or uh, do you have a staff report? I'm not sure if I should address the, the the other lot is part of my business already. It's part of my building, and I bought that building thirty over thirty years ago, and I bought it from Aiden Abu like a root beer stand, which it was commercial, but somehow one of those lots, which is half of my building, is ended up being R1D. So it's interesting situation there. I'm not sure what happened there. <laughs> yeah, I, I just in kind of looking, first of all, we deal with a lot of these. We've dealt, you may recall in the past, the planning commission has dealt with a lot of split zones. Uh, I believe the planners, when they did the zoning in 2010, may have not taken the most um, in-depth dive into our parcel data. Um, they probably didn't. They may not have even had access to GIS back then or data like we have right now. Um, but we've dealt with a lot of split houses or split businesses that were dual zoned, essentially, because they set across parcel lines. Um, so they you know, when we were first looking at this, the idea was, could we zero out the lot line? Well, it still doesn't change the zoning on top of it. So we really do need to take this more, um, this approach to really correct what's going on with Mr. Zadis's property. So anyways, I do have a staff report. Um, again, yeah, please staff. present the staff report. Absolutely. Um, this is a city, uh, Michigan City Planning Commission, September 24th, 2024. Uh, case number P-102-24, rezoning of, and this, the location is 2308 Franklin Street, and it's George Zadius is the petitioner, along with Pantelis Zadius as well as the petitioner. Request uh, the rezoning of two, uh, Mr. Zadius is requesting the rezoning of two parcels slash lots um, located along South Street from R1D to B2 to match the current zoning of the other parcels associated with this structure and site. Staff analysis. At present, an automobile repair shop located at 2308 Franklin Street resides on two, resides on two parcels and has two zoning classifications. The Franklin Street zoning is B2 general commercial, while the rear portion of the structure is zoned R1D. Additionally, the lot directly adjacent to the rear of the structure and rear lot is zoned R1D as well. The owner wishes to rezone the rear portion of the structure slash lot and the additional lot adjacent to the rear to match the B2 general zoning, general commercial zoning. The goal is to install a fence and prepare, and prepare the additional lot for the uses associated with the automobile repair shop. 
And as Mr. Zadis has stated, he really intends to store cars there so that they're not on Franklin Street anymore. The rezone will essentially bring the current use and zoning of the structure and the additional lot into one conforming zoning classification. According to Indiana Code 3674, I'm sorry, 36-7-4-603, in consideration of this request for a zone rezoning, the planning commission shall pay reasonable regard to the comprehensive plan, the county land development plan, which is, and also our momentum 2040 comprehensive plan, current conditions and the character of current structures and uses in the in the, each district, the most desirable use for which the land in each district is adapted, four, the conservation of property values throughout the jurisdiction, and five, reasonable development and growth. I would say that this um, rezoning addresses all five of these in a positive in a positive light. Uh, our county, our comprehensive plan wants commercial zoning along Franklin Street. Uh, the current conditions and character of the structure, the and the uses. He's currently using it as a automobile repair shop, and he would like to continue using it as an automobile repair shop. The most desirable use for which the land in each district is adapted. He is using it for its most desirable current use. Um, the conservation of property values, he's able to continue to use his property in the manner in which he's using it as of right now. And he's actually not rezoning the back portion of this lot, which has a house on it. He is preserving that preserving that buffer into the to the uh, residential adjacent neighborhood. Uh, number five, reasonable development and growth. I would say this is a is reasonable to that and the growth of our city. Um, staff recommendation. Planning staff has reviewed and reviewed the proposed request for the rezoning of the two parcels from R1D to B2 and recommends approval of this project or of this rezoning, sorry. Are there any other staff reports from the departments regarding? Yes, and I do have um, a letter as well. Sorry, a remonstrance. I'll start with staff reports. Uh, this is a staff report from the fire department. Fire department has no issues with this request. Sanitation department uh, commented, the sanitary district takes no exception to the rezone or proposed parking area expansion. Water department, the water department, the department has no issue with the request to rezone this pro <clears throat> the property specified. To the city engineer, the city engineer has no objection to the rezone. And then I will read your remonstrance. Give me one second. Topic, Michigan City Planning, this was received 8-19-20. 24. Topic, Michigan City Planning Commission petition of rezoning George Zadius, written remonstrance, Patrick Tansky, owner and resident 115 Greenwood Ave. Number one, the business with two rental houses has horrible parking, not enough space is available for customers, workers, and rental occupants. Number two, the intersection from Franklin Street, Greenwood Ave, and Lafayette is very busy with traffic, young kids, homeless people, bike riders, pets, businesses, etc., very dangerous. Number three, starting in the morning and throughout the day, traffic uses. Traffic uses a shortcut to speed through their parking lot to, to avoid the traffic signal, very dangerous. Four, drugs is commonly sold to renters, youth, homeless, businesses, workers. When police arrive, they throw the drugs into the dumpster and then return, I don't know what that means, uh, to in, to return to jump in the dumpster to retrieve. Number five, during the winter months, when the snow needs plowed and contractors ignore neighborhoods or neighbors and pushes their snow into the private property, he blocks the sidewalk, large amounts of snow, such as mail, work, mail workers and others must walk in the street, very dangerous. Uh, the two houses are in poor condition with roofing, siding, molding, etc. crumbling, property values issue. Number seven, trash from the business or renters end up in the neighbor's yard. 
and left for them to clean up. Example, pizza boxes, napkins, papers, receipts, general trash. Eight, the best solution would be to eliminate the business and homes and start over with a completely different alternative possible idea, extending parking for the businesses. Domino's pizza, muffler shop, window wrap, and their employees. I don't think he's got the right piece of parcel because this Mr. Zadius does not have two houses on his property. He only has one and it's actually in very good shape. But I did read it into the records. And you don't distribute pizza boxes from your shop. (laughs) (laughs) But I think it's Roma's Pizza. In fact, does have two a pizza shop and two houses on it. Mm -hmm. Any other correspondence, Mr. York? No, Mr. President, not. Attorney Hale, do we have an attorney report for this? Yes, sir. My report is for petition P-102-24 amended. Petitioner and owner are George Zedius. The request is for to rezone from R1D to B2, two lots along or fronting South Street between 1701 Lafayette and 2308 Franklin Street. I think um, a picture is worth a thousand words, and you should have a copy of uh, the surveys that are provided as part of the application uh, and as part of my report. You'll note that Mr. Zidius, the petitioner owner, owns four lots in succession. They all front South Street. Um, The first lot is on Franklin Street. He is not asking that to be rezoned because it's already zoned properly. It's the next two lots. The first lot immediately uh, after the Franklin Street property houses half of his building. I I think Mr. York put that in his report very clearly. And it's the next lot, it's a vacant lot, and it's directly behind the lot that has half the building. Those are the two lots that he wants rezoned from R1D to B2. And um, the final lot is a home. Uh, he he uh, does not own it directly. He controls the owner of that property. Now, it's not in your name, is what he means. We know that the uh, code allows owners of property to initiate a petition to rezone. And we also know that we are here to um, give it a uh, review and a public hearing to determine if it's appropriate and it meets the appropriate standards. And then we're to send it on to the Common Council, which makes the final decision. And so we need to um, do a couple of things. We need to approve this or reject it. And we need to send it on to the Common Council with a favorable recommendation or an unfavorable recommendation. Um, I've listed in my report, you have a copy of it in front of you, I think um, the materials that are part of this um, petition and the record includes those materials as well as Mr. Zedius's presentation, Mr. York's presentation and his report and mine. Um, I would note that I added um, some documents including a quick claim deed uh, recorded in May of this year as instrument 2024R-05226 Um, which relates to one of the lots that is to be rezoned. Um, Because it's so recent, I wanted to include it because it shows that the property was deeded into Mr. Zedius's name. So he is, in fact, the owner of that lot two, block 17. And then four recent Beacon reports, again, because this change of ownership for one of the lots that sought to be rezoned is so new, I thought it would be helpful to see what the Beacon reports show, and they do indeed show um, these three lots owned by Mr. Zedius and the fourth lot owned, as I indicated to you. Um, The first and the fourth are not relevant. It's the second and the third lots, the interior lots, if you will, between Franklin Street and Lafayette that he's asking to be um, rezoned. So, 
Um, with that, I would just uh, ask that you make a motion um, to um, approve or deny, but that motion should include um, sending it on to the Common Council with either a favorable or an unfavorable recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Hale. Do we have any comments or questions from the commissioners? Uh, yes, real quickly. Uh, I've been a, a member of the Planning Commission for a decade now, and this is not uncommon. We've had numerous situations where we've had to uh, rezone pieces of property that somehow got mixed up in the, in the, the transition uh, through the years. Uh, the other thing is, uh, I agree, I, I live in the area and I, the, the lot in front is always very crowded. I think it's uh, be a great idea to be able to move those uh, cars to the back area to uh, open it up a little bit and get it off Franklin Street. Any other comments, questions from the commissioners? Yes, I have a question. Will you be putting up, erecting a fence to separate from that lot to Correct. the to the house? Yep. Thank you. It's actually what started this whole conversation. <laughs> he all started with that. <laughs> Any other commissioner comments or questions? Then we'll open it up for the public comment. Is there any public comment online or in person? If you have a comment, please step up to the microphone, state your name and address. Well, it's Scott Mellon, 200 Kenwood Place, full planning commission. Um, yeah, I've been following along on Beacon. When this came up before the, the planning commission before, I didn't realize the first slot in question was that two thirds of this building. So it's really, that, that lot's a no brainer. I think we all agree. Um, the vacant lot to the east of that makes a lot of sense for him for his business purposes. He's a good long-term uh, Franklin Street business person. I would also point out though, that he actually owns a, a fifth lot on that block. Um, so this is, becomes a very large contiguous parcel, but Beacon shows there's an alley there off of Lafayette Street. Is that going to be improved, abandoned? It's it already is. Yeah, it's already is. <laughs> and the other question would just be about landscaping, anything like the fence line that he puts on South Street. We wouldn't want that right on the sidewalk. Is there any setback requirement? I'm looking at my planner here. Yeah, because that's the front yeah, thing. Actually, you can't yeah, once get it's a six foot fence. There. Once it's yeah. rezoned, then issues. Once it's rezoned, then it has to comply with the zoning that it's rezoned to. So at that time, I'm looking at Kyle, he's sitting right out there. He'll have to. You have to come in, apply for Kyle, build a fence. The fence has a requirement. There, yes, all the all the other things that come along with that zoning class kick in. Well, let's just encourage him to make it as pretty as possible on the side street there. I, but otherwise, I think this is clearly a, a well deserved uh, change. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment in person or online? Any other public comment in person or online? Seeing none, we'll close the public comment. Do you have a final thoughts? Oh, I okay. appreciate you. <laughs> Attorney Hale? Yes, Mr. Granquist. I, I neglected to say, although um, I believe Mr. York indicated in his report, I did have an opportunity um, to review all of the notices um, because, and I was very careful because we've had some issues in the past. And, um, you're free to go ahead and take this matter on into consideration and, and have a vote this evening. Um, he's complied with our requirements. Thank you, Attorney Hale. Yes, uh, it's been presented to the commission and we've had a couple of continuances here. So thank you for your patience. Uh, with that, we've had a staff report, attorney report, commission questions, public uh, hearing comments. So is there a motion from the commissioners? I make a motion to move the rezoning request to the city council with a favorable recommendation. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. York. If you're in a second, I'll call for the vote. Mr. Balling. Yes. Mr. Connolly. Yes. Mr. Dabney. Aye. Mr. Granquist. Yes. Mr. Hoffman. Aye. Mr. Clender. Yes. Uh, Mr. Hitta. Yes. 
Uh, Mr. Warner. Aye. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, so it'll go to, we'll, we'll sign a certification, we'll certify it to the uh, city council, and then they'll set it for, uh, to be heard as a petition. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your business and our community here. We'll move on to the next petition based on the uh, amended agenda. Petition 906-24, brand one, Whiteman, in care of Nate Fuckner, requesting minor subdivision for Grandma's Attic Self-Storage, minor subdivision, a primary plan approval for a self-storage facility and some future commercial use and one outlet on vacant land lying east adjacent to 4400 East Michigan Boulevard, uh, parcel number 46-01-36-301-003-2023. Mr. York. Uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, just talk a little bit about this. Uh, Mr. Diener, uh, we've been working, me and Kyle have been working with the petitioner for a year, about a year on this property. Um, he is, I will say that he has done everything that we've asked him to date. Um, I do have a couple of conditions, which I'll read into the record once we get to that. But at this time, I'm going to hand the floor over to just kind of talk a little bit about the project, the process and things like that in the subdivision. And please state your name and address. Nathan Flickner with Whiteman, 1402 East Mishawaka Avenue, 46614. Uh, Mr. Diener here has purchased a property on uh, the boulevard and 212 and uh, wanting to split it into a couple pieces of buildable property. There is wetlands on the property. We are going to make those an outlot unbuildable property. Um, maybe for future mitigation if somebody needs it um, to uh, construct something else, but there would be that would be about all we would be able to do with the outlot. Um, but uh, he's wanting to put a storage facility on one of the lots, uh, do the drainage and everything for the whole site, a frontage road and everything for the whole site, and leave one piece of property for uh, sale and uh, put another business there is really the idea. Um, I'm not sure we are just in the concept phase of the story, so we're not sure how many units we're getting on there. We did uh, send the plat with showing a concept plan of kind of how we can lay something out on that piece of property um, for, and uh, showing the other property for future development. So really it'd open up, you know, for two lots of business um, and then the outlaw would just be a wetlands. Right. Is there anything else you want to add to this thing? Um, yeah. Um, yeah, your name. Yes, yeah. not much of the microphone. Just state your name and address, please. My name is James Diener. Um, the area in question, the address is uh, 4400 East Michigan Boulevard. Okay, it's uh, basically it hugs the northwest corner of the uh, Cloverleaf of uh, Highway 212 and Michigan Boulevard. It's an odd shaped lot, so it's going to be hard to develop. We've got 22 acres there. 11.4 I want to turn into a self storage facility and it's actually going to wrap around the clover leaf which is a very difficult part to develop because self storage is very malleable I can put these buildings anywhere so it's kind of ideal for that section what I want to try to do is leave as much frontage road which will leave 6.7 acres in between the nursing home and the very end of the uh, clover leaf so I'll have very little frontage and the frontage road but what we're trying to do is actually cut that 6.7 acres into a more easily developed piece of land. It'll be much more rectangular. Um, the remainder of the land will actually be in an outlot. It's about four acres. It'll be in between the developed land that we're having up front and um, Tulip Drive. There's a neighborhood back there. We've got some high quality wetlands in there. So we put it all into, the, uh, um, into that outlot. Um, it also actually is a nice green space keeps me good with my neighbors. Um, there's no reason to develop that land, so we're actually going to hopefully sell it off to somebody else eventually for mitigation, but it should remain as is. So it's a nice little green space, a little bit of a buffer in between the buildings. Is there access off of um, Michigan Boulevard? There will be. There's a little spur there? There will off be. Off of Rogowski Road? Uh, not a not off of Rogowski Road, but you know, off of Michigan Boulevard. And I've worked with, with Skyler um, in 
how far down we need to actually have that. We're going to try to do that as close to the nursing home to give as much leeway for people exiting 212 South onto Michigan Boulevard West. Yeah, Rogowski is for all intents and purposes a an alley that probably should have remained an alley. I don't know if you're familiar with Rogowski. Uh, it's very tight, so uh, I don't think we would allow access off of that road. It would tax it even more than the few houses that are back, that, back there. But there is, I believe there's already a curb cut on Michigan Boulevard at this location, but we've talked about moving it because the idea is to create some type of frontage road to yep. service that commercial lot here that's being created. So that we can actually get people off the road, service it if it becomes some type of if it becomes it's actually a rather large lot. Uh, it could become two 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 pieces of commercial property if, if it wanted to be. So yeah, two developers. I mean, we've got six point seven acres there of developed land that I'll be able to sell off. Hopefully, somebody in Michigan City will want it. Um, also, the exit that we're actually planning we're planning on it right across on the other side of the road. There's also an exit for the uh, um, I think it's a car lot. A car lot and a trucking company are out yeah. there. Yes. Any further staff report, Mr. Shark? Sure. Um, before I give that staff report, I would like to just add a little bit more to this. Um, when Mr. Dean approached me, he approached me for um, or approached us about this lot. We talked about storage, and um, it's just such a. It really is a good opportunity to do both of these uses here because it's he as you mentioned he can get the storage in an area that kind of lends itself to i won't say not useful but it's not useful for commercial development but we're also maintaining the potential of that commercial development along michigan boulevard that really adds uh, a value to michigan boulevard at this location and this piece of land in my opinion and i think you'll have no problem getting rid of it um my staff report Case number 906-24, minor subdivision, Michigan Boulevard. Um, I wasn't sure what the, exactly the address was because we haven't, we don't give addresses till we build it, but it is about in the 4400 block of Michigan Boulevard, uh, known as Grandma's Attic. James Diener is the petitioner. The request, the petitioner is requesting the approval of two lot minor subdivision located at the northwest corner of 21220 and Michigan Boulevard. It's kind of at that cloverleaf intersection where all those roads come together. Not kind of, it is actually at the intersection. Um, staff analysis, currently there are no structures on this site. The site is a vacant piece of land that is zone B2 general commercial. Uh, the flat currently meets all the requirements for a minor subdivision. Uh, the land is, a, is approximately 28.57 acres of unsubdivided and undeveloped land. Um, staff recommendations, based on the analysis and the information provided, staff recommends approval of 906-24 with the following conditions. Prior to secondary flat approval, we're, um, the sanitary uh, department stormwater has requested a maintenance easement with, to be executed with the sanitary district uh, for the continued maintenance of the stormwater basins as well as the stormwater infrastructure uh, and or stormwater and any infrastructure that's on lot A. The outlaw A, sorry. Um, developer, uh, the also that the developer comply with Article 20, stormwater management of the city code, and the developer securing approval of the project stormwater drainage plan by the city's spec specified drainage plan review engineer. Okay. Well, those are the only two conditions. All right. And I think I think we've talked to him a little bit about it because one of the things that we were looking for um was a pipe so that we can actually get the uh, the rainwater flow. But we were looking to put that in between, there's an easement in between two houses on on uh, Tulip Drive. Um, it's a 30 foot, I think it's a 30 foot easement, um, but there's already a ditch that runs on there and then there's a tile that brings the water under, underneath. For, this, for the drainage of the frontage lots, we wanted to actually put that tile right down in there. Um, it just eases it, it eases um, just the drainage. So you understand the conditions and accept those? Yes, sir, I do. Yes. Any other staff reports, Mr. York? I would just say, keep in mind, this is still primary plot, so we still have secondary. We'll have to come back for that. And I think between that time and now, we should be able to figure these things out. For the department reports? Yeah, give me one second. And while you're collecting that, Attorney Hale? 
you have a report and verification of proper notice? Yes. I know you received notices last minute here tonight. Yes, sir. I would note for the commissioner's uh, information that our rules and the application that all the petitioners read, hopefully, and sign requires notice documentation to the extent possible be submitted on the Monday before our meeting, which allows adequate time for review. In this case, I received the notification documentation about five minutes before we started our meeting this evening. I was, however, uh, able to review all of that documentation, and I can tell you that the petitioner has met our notice requirements, and you're free to consider this matter this evening. Um, and we thank you for your quick review at the last minute here. Um, this is petition 906-24-1. The petitioner applicant was Whiteman and Nate Flickner. The property owner is Grandma's Attic Self Storage LLC, which Mr. Diener is a, a member of. Um, the engineer and surveyor was Whiteman, and the request is a minor subdivision, primary plat approval this evening. We're all familiar with uh, minor subdivisions, if approval is granted this evening, um, based on your determination that it meets the requirements of our subdivision and zoning ordinances, um, the, the petitioner will have 120 days to submit his um, final plat. And that final plat, however, will be reviewed by Mr. Schuyler as the enforcement officer. And if he finds it's it meets um, what was in the primary plot and still com complies with our um, zoning and subdivision ordinances, um, he's free to pass it along as a final plot approval, and it will not come back before you all. Um, under very strange circumstances, it could come back if there were a denial or a, an appeal. Um, finally, I would just state that in my report, I just noted all of the matters, the materials that the petitioner has submitted in support of his petition, and also included in the record would be um, his presentation, Mr. York's report, and um, my comments. Thank you, Attorney Hill. Mr. York? Yes. Um... Uh, so other department reports. Um, the water department has no issues. <clears throat> Excuse me. The department uh, has from the water department. The department has no issues with the requested plat. Um, from the fire department, fire department has no issues with the request. Um, so sanitation gave me two, and then the, the other two comments. The conditions were uh, after after this was presented to me, but I am going to read this one too, just for informational purposes. Um, Sanitary de Department, the Sanitary District advises the applicant of a 20 inch diameter sanitary main, which conveys flow from points north of Route 212 and points east from Route 20 and Route 35, flowing generally from east to west, southwest, and then northwest near the parallel to the southern boundary of the proposed subdivision parcel. The main's average depth is 17 to 18 feet below surface grade. So I think they're just giving you That's great. how deep that is so you know where, where, where your mains go. Yeah, I don't want to touch that. <laughs> um, That's it. I don't have any other. Uh, I do know that Mr. Warner and I have walked this property. We've been out there probably, I think he's been out there twice, but we have walked the property. Uh, we know where the, um, pipe, the big pipe that he's speaking about under Tulip, uh, I think it's Tulip Lane goes. Uh, we have started at that point and walked all the way back into uh, near the wetlands and stuff like that. So we have, we do have, we have had boots on the ground at this location. And Mr. Warner, if you'd like to add anything, please feel free. You're running right target. <laughs> Outstanding. Thank you. Okay, we've had staff reports, departmental reports, attorney report, comments from the petitioner, any comments or questions from the commissioners? Yeah, I have something that I wanted to, to clear up. Uh, Skyler, just for record keeping purposes, I want to make sure everything is in order. Uh, when you read the request and the staff analysis and the staff recommendation, 
Uh, you read the petitioners requesting the approval of a two uh, minor subdivision located at the, you said, northwest. West. And it's in here. East. North yes, I changed it because Mr. Dean is correct. It is in the west. I okay. Would, I would argue it's on the west side. Just yeah. make sure that everything is in order and that we don't have any problems going forward. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Dabney. Any other comments or questions from the commissioners? Then we'll open up for public hearing, public comment. Any comment from the public in person or online? State your name and address, please. Uh, yes, this is Tommy Kolovic from 1316 Ohio Street. Good evening, distinguished and honorable plan commissioners. Um, I know a lot of people on social media are going to be asking, what are they building at 212 and then 20? Don't tell them, grab a cell storage attic. And a lot of people are going to say, Oh, just what we need, another uh, cell storage facility in Michigan City. Well, you know, my answer to that is, but, well, you know, they're great taxpayers. So I just want to welcome Graham the Self Storage Attic and the uh, storage facility in Michigan City, and I hope they profit and thrive. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Any other public comment? Please state your name and address. Uh, Rhonda Bourne, 113 Tree Drive. I uh, don't agree with the storage facility. The neighborhood was disrupted when they took city property and filled in Deer Creeks. That's why it's marshy. It's marshy on both sides. It's marshy behind my house. It's marshy across the street. And we have plenty of storage facilities within five mile radius. You have Minix down on 20 and 39. You have who on... Uh, on 20 from from uh franklin street to swan lake cemetery and then there's one further down on highway 212 i mean that's enough storage facilities in the unit i mean around in this area i mean they could do that somewhere else i know my decision the way i feel is not going to make a uh uh difference in the decision that you all are going to make but with that being said it's always going to be water issues because they built in a deer creek to put modular homes which made the property values go down so now what is it going to do now and i'm ready to retire in a year and a half and i don't want all of that busy traffic going out there that that's my serenity thank you for listening thank you for your comment any other public comment in person or online any other public comment in the room or online? Seeing none, we'll close the public comment. We've, we've heard the staff report, petitioners report, attorneys report, departmental reports. Is there a motion from the commissioners? Uh, yes, Skyler. Uh, first of all, do, do, uh, before we make a motion, is there there uh, some uh, something being done concerning the water runoff situation that uh, the, the young lady was talking about? Yes, they they will be re required to build uh, stormwater storage on site, which they have worked with uh, our current um, stormwater review um, engineer to make sure that that's done correctly. Uh, it's actually a rather large storage facility, um, and then also there's a they're they're reserving that lot A as a buffer because it's actually high quality wetland. They can't really touch it. Uh, it's been deemed as high quality wetland, um, so that wetland will provide a buffer as well. Um, the use of the storage facility. So keep in mind this is zone B two general commercial. Um, some of the other uses that have tried to go in here are um, much heavier uses than this use um hence why i'm thinking you know from a buffering protection of neighborhoods standpoint this is a much less um intense use with respect to being up against that neighborhood or the neighborhood on rogowski as well um, but they will be required and held to a standard of the stormwater what's in the stormwater code as you saw as part of the condition of approval thank you all traffic and access will be from Highway Mature Boulevard. Correct. It'll have to come off the boulevard. And so we, there's nothing coming off a tulip or the, no. the houses and so forth. So that, no. any other questions from the commissioners or a motion? Oh, may, may I also add one more thing? Sure. The, the benefit of that lot A being wetland and being conserved, it actually provides a really good buffer between this space 
and um, tulip tree. Your 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 gain your trees are the best buffers that you can possibly get from the standpoint of light, sound, things of that nature. They can't touch those. They have to leave all that alone because it's actually in the outlaw A. Um, so they won't be able to just. I guess I would say that they can't just go in there and start clearing and things like that. It, it has to stay like it is. Uh, it could be used, um, Mr. Diener mentioned earlier, it could be used for a mitigation project. So if somebody wanted to purchase that and use it to mitigate offsetting a, a wetland somewhere and purchase this as a wetland, it's actually a very high quality wetland. Uh, he had a wetland delineation done on that. Um, so the benefit of tulip tree is that it's not gonna have um, something right up against the back of it. It actually has a really large buffer area of that of that wetland there. And I will add, having walked through there with Skylar, it is a very thick wooded area. <laughs> Thank you again for that uh, clearing up the, those questions. Uh, with uh, that being said, I'd like to make a motion that uh, we approve a minor subdivision uh, primary plat petition 906-24. With, with conditions? With conditions as listed. I will second that. We have a motion and a second, Mr. York. I'll call for the vote. Mr. Ballin? Yes. Mr. Connolly? Yes. Mr. Dabney? Aye. Mr. Granquist? Yes. Mr. Hoffman? Aye. Mr. Clender? Yes. Ms. Tijeta? Yes. And Mr. Warner? Aye. Motion approved. Thank you very much. Thank you for your interest in our community. Yes, the next two items on the agenda are petition 903-241 and 903-242. These are kind of joint petitions. One's a PUD uh, request and one's a primary plat approval request. Mr. York, do you want to introduce these and make some initial comments? Yes. So at this time, um, I... I would just state that I'm, I know the petitioner is here tonight and he would like to, I think, make some comments if I'm not uh, if I'm understanding. Uh, but, but what I would say is that right now I don't have enough information to complete my um, staff analysis. I'm waiting on a few things from very, from a couple of departments uh, to get back to me to create that. So I'm, I'm, I, am, I am requesting that the plan commission continue this to allow us time to make sure that we have the right information to go into our staff report uh, to make sure that we send it on to the council with a positive recommendation. Um, I would also say that I've been working with this petition for quite a while now, and um, it's a it's a it's a good project. Um, but uh, at this time, I need some more information to go into my staff report for to send to, for us to make a thorough recommendation to the plan to the to the council because the next step would be to go to the council. But I would like to say that the petitioner is here tonight, and I believe he would like to address our plan commission. I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Uh, Tony McCree. Thank you for coming. I know this was on the agenda of the last month. We continued it till tonight. Thank you for coming. State your name and address, please. Tony McCree, Pyramid Properties, 1007 Moore Road. Uh, dear Plan Commission, I would like to express my disappointment with the city's handling of our project submission. Mm -hmm. It has been over 60 days since we submitted our drawings, yet they have not been fully reviewed. Furthermore, I am extremely frustrated by the lack of communication throughout this process. Rarely have my emails or phone inquiries regarding this project been acknowledged or addressed. We believe we designed a fantastic project that would have significantly enhanced the Moore Road corridor and boosted property values in the surrounding area. Unfortunately, with opposition from St. Andrews Village 
and the challenges we have faced with the city, I've decided to withdraw these applications for a planned unit development and major subdivision. Moving forward, we plan to submit a new application for major subdivision that will fully conform to zoning regulations. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to future opportunities to work together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, petitioner requested a withdrawal of these petitions. Attorney Hale, do you have any comments, thoughts, or instructions? Or, sh or shall we motion to uh, withdraw? I have two thoughts. One, Mr. York um, asked for a, a continuance of one month. Um, and apparently Mr. McCree is asking to withdraw that perhaps um, we should ask him to submit that in writing and in the meantime, handle Mr. York's request. I guess I'm trying to cut the baby in two. <laughs> um, to be very candid to everyone tonight, I'm, I'm hopeful that Mr. McCree may change his mind. And perhaps we give him a day or two to do that by putting his request um, in writing, which would be much more appropriate than um, just uh, indicating verbally that that's what he'd like to do. In the meantime, I believe it would be appropriate to um, consider Mr. York's uh, request and, and have a formal vote, yay or nay, on that. Any comments or questions uh, from the commissioners? Yes, sir. What's the vote on uh, on on Mr. York? Mr. York yeah, from the staff is York. requesting that we continue it, there's so no, we would make a motion. To, there's no yeah. motion. You, the, no. the plan commission yeah. members, must make a motion second and vote on it to approve it. He just made a request, but it'd be up to us to make a motion to continue. So, so. No, not yet. Any comments from the commissioners? I would like to make a, a comment, please, Mr. President. Uh, Ross Balling here, Commissioner. Go ahead, Mr. Balling. Thank you. Um, on both sides, obviously, um, you know, we're trying to make Michigan City better and we have more uh, housing that is uh, subject to, uh, you know, the codes and uh, everybody's wishes. Uh, I do know Mr. McCree. I do believe in his project. I, I hope and uh, I wish uh, we can get uh, Mr. McCree back into um, Skyler's office and uh, come up with a, a game plan that uh, works for everyone. And uh, that's all I wish, uh, because I do think we have uh, a good operator and a good person uh, to work with. Thank you. Any other comments, questions from the commissioners or a motion? Question. Um, I'm hearing the going back and forth and I am I still want just a clarification again. What exactly are we voting on? What is happening? I have it in my head what I, I believe, but I want you to verify that for me, please. No. Mr. Mr. York, as the first order of business requested that you all consider uh, continuing this matter to our next meeting. That would be the October meeting. I believe that that should come first. And so that is up to you. You have to make a motion in a second and vote favorably to continue the matter. If it's not continued, then we have the petition on the agenda, and then we'd have to deal with the second issue. But as Attorney Hale has suggested, we have a last minute request by the petitioner to withdraw, but we're requesting that in writing and formalized if we don't continue it. Skyler, could you give us uh, any uh, staff report on uh, Mr. McCree's 
Um, I can give you comments. This, I this, do not. Yeah, his I do not have a completed disagree. staff report. Okay. I'm waiting on our our stormwater to review uh, the current proposal and provide us a favorable uh, review of that or a uh, request additional information, but to get us to a favorable, because keep in mind the next step of this is to make a recommendation to our, our uh, city council. And we want that to go forward with all of the positive, all the positive, Every we want everything to be in a positive. We don't want to be waiting on things at this time to go to the council. So that's kind of where I'm at of waiting. Um, I want to be sure that the capacities are right and that um, and I need that in writing from our, our stormwater reviewers. So that's kind of where it is, Ross. I see. So there was something uh, you weren't there was something missing. So you couldn't give I, up your I wouldn't say missing. I think that's the wrong word. I would say a review of what's been submitted and and uh, and then getting back to me. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Yeah, they Thank did provide stormwater analysis. Those were provided to us. Uh, I'm just waiting on our our review our reviewers to uh, return back to me. They've been asking questions. Uh, they've requested some information. I'm just waiting on that to get back to me. Who are they? Is it the DNR or I'm sorry? No, 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 no. Uh, it's a uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Wrong. Burke Engineering who's working with the sanitary district. Yes, they have been hired as our stormwater reviewers. Okay, thank you. Yes. So in as much as we do not have a full staff report and a recommendation from the staff, then it would be an option for the commission to continue this and give the staff more time to complete its review. Uh, yes, I make a motion that we uh, continue a petition 90324 per Pyramid properties until our next scheduled meeting of October. In October, thank you. And that would be the two two petitions. Uh, yes, both petitions, one and two. I will second that motion. And Mr. York will take roll call. Okay, I'll call the roll. Mr. Balling? Yes. Mr. Conley? Yes. Mr. Dabney? Aye. Mr. Grandquist? Yes. Mr. Hoffman? Aye. Mr. Clender? Yes. Ms. Tejeta? Yes. Mr. Warner? Aye. Motion approved. Mr. Mr. Attorney Hale. If I may, I would just note for the public and for the members of the commission that uh, this matter has been continued to our next regularly scheduled meeting, which is October 22nd. That meeting will be held at 6 p.m. and um, it will be held here. At that time, we can go forward with hearing the petition if uh, the petitioner so wishes, or we can consider his withdrawal and and uh, be done with the matter at, in that manner. I would uh, repeat my request that it is far more appropriate that a withdrawal be made in writing, and I would ask the petitioner, if he wishes to do so, to please supply that to Mr. York's office. Unless and until the petitioner does make the formal withdrawal. This, this, these two petitions are scheduled for the hearing next month as a public hearing, and we will uh, present at that time. We thank the public for your concern, your interest in our community here. And no further notice will need to be given. It's publicly announced. I may just briefly address the No, nothing, so nothing yet. When we get to when we get to public comments, okay. we'll open it up for public comments in just a bit. Thank you. Uh, is there any new business from the commission? Anything new? No. Yes, sir. No, Attorney Hale. Oh, sorry, Attorney Hale. Um, my fault. 
attached to the material that I gave you my report, that is, um, for um, petition P-102-24, that was George Zidius um, requesting rezoning. As you'll recall in my uh, comments and my report, I indicated that our job is to send that on to the Common Council, um, and, and you so voted to send it on to the Common Council with a favorable recommendation. To accomplish that transfer to the Common Council, we um, provide a certification of the Plan Commission, which we address to the Council. You have that certification uh, in the materials that I provided, and I would just ask that you uh, take a vote on that to approve um, the transfer of our determination tonight onto the Common Council with that certification. Thank you, Attorney Hale. And with that explanation and clarification, we would take a motion to approve the certification. I'll make, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll make a motion to approve the certification. A second. I'll call for the vote. Mr. Balling. Yes. Mr. Connolly. Yes. Mr. Dabney. Aye. Mr. Hoffman. Aye. Mr. Clender. Aye. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed Mr. Grandquist. Yes. <laughs> sorry about that. Then, uh, Ms. Tieta. Yes. And Mr. Warner. Aye. Motion approved. Thank you, Attorney Hale. Thank you uh, for your consideration. I'm sorry I, I missed that. Okay, next item is public comment. So we we'll have public comment here. Fine you may please step up to the microphone, state your name and address. And My name's Robert Schwerd. I'm an attorney. My office is 825 Lincoln Way, Valparaiso. I'm representing the Andrew, St. Andrews Village Townhomes. And I just want to make it clear that St. Andrews is not opposing development. Development is good for the city. It, it's good for their subdivision. We're not sitting back and, and saying, we enjoy watching birds fly in the undeveloped land. I mean, I've sat through hundreds of plan commission meetings where remonstrators would say such things, or we just want green space. I want to scream and say, then buy the land. Uh, I, I've represented one plan commission for over 40 years, another for over 25. And, and when they ask for my counsel, I always say, the developer is in a hurry. They're always in a hurry. But the plan commission should never, ever be a hurry, in, the, in a hurry. And we sent a letter today requesting that this hearing be continued, obviously it's been, uh, and that's great. But we listed reasons and all the things that we've done to try and do our due diligence. So we're not sitting back on our hands, but we have a little bit of a conundrum now, because if the developer waits two, two three days before the next meeting, I'm going to be asking for a continuance because should or my clients may say, we don't care, Bob, spend the money, pay our experts, we're going full forward. But that's somewhat unfair. We'd like to know on a date certain what he's going to do. And I don't want to be demanding, but I think that's the fair and right thing so that we know to be prepared so that we don't have to come and ask for continuance. So if, if you would consider a, a deadline, uh, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, this is Tommy Kolovic from 1316 Ohio Street. 
I just want to mention again, you know, that this development, this is not on the mission, the fixed route for the Michigan City Municipal Bus Transit. I think Mayor Angie, she needs to add a fifth bus route for the city to service that section of the city. I know the Redevelopment Commission last time, this last meeting, they said there's going to be another development going in on Tryon Road. Uh, you know, our fellow residents of Tall Timbers, they haven't had a fixed route bus service on Springland Avenue since that one in 1969. My other concern, uh, it's my kind of feeling, any families you're going to leave, they're going to be sending their children to private schools. So this development is not going to be do anything to, to, to boost our continuously declining in rural Michigan City area schools, which my families are very proud of students of Michigan City area schools. I also want to mention, I have a contact our county assessor, Mike Chosen. He did assure me this property will be reassessed. All right, now it's tax exempt to... to you know, since they're going to be paying taxes for 2024-2025. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Please you state your name and address. Yes, Kathleen Shields. I represent Long Beach Point Condominium Association. And um, I'm disappointed that Mr. McCree um, is pulling out or whatever. We do not object to his development, but we did have a couple concerns and some of those were um, for the city to address. Um, we have um, parking issues that will be magnified if this goes through without being addressed. And also um, we don't feel that there was a traffic study that was done. We would request that. Um, in addition, um, um, we were, I don't know if there's any way we can control or recommend no short-term rentals that was proposed. Those were our concerns. So, okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I threw the cracks. Hi, I'm Jerry Schreiber, and I live at St. Andrews. Um, I want to bring to the council's uh, attention that one of the major concerns we have out there is the traffic situation. And it may sound like a, a ploy that we lose traffic against the development, but it's not. Uh, we need to get a, a study done by NDOT to come up here and do a proper study. And I, I've heard there's been some study done, but I, I don't think it's what we really need. That highway, it's not just more road, it's the highway that is getting heavier traffic. Um, if you go up the road where they're selling all the marijuana, that traffic is coming down Route 12. Route 12 is now the, the drug highway as far as I'm concerned. And with more road, a single lane coming across, it, it's a death trap. And, it, and anybody in this room knows that. Um, we need a crossing with, with a light like is a Carwick Road. Not the one at Liberty, Liberty single loan. Carwick Road allows for three at one point four lanes down to three lanes. But we have the impact of, of a school. We've got Long Beach Co Point. We've got St. Andrews. We've got half of Long Beach. We've got Shoreland Hills. We've got half of Doolin Beach. They're all coming out on that road. And if you go down to, to Carwick, with the shopping center and the same developments, they have a large crossing. We don't have that. And this project that is being proposed brings, if there's 40 units, I'm gonna say 80 cars, 60 at the minimum, but 80 cars, more coming out of there. And it's it just, it, it's gonna be impossible. And, and I think to not get the state of Indiana it's not, I know it's not Michigan City's problem. It's a state problem. But I talked to somebody who is a, uh, he's, he's a contractor that does work for the city, and he's somewhere over in the region. But anyway, I just discussed it with him about a year and a half ago. And uh, his comment to me, what was done out on 12 uh, was a Band-Aid. I don't know if any of you are familiar, but they've, put some lines out, narrowed it down, and it's, it's a Band-Aid. 
that's not that's not sufficient. There have been accidents there, and and I I hate to think that we have to wait till someone gets killed that we get something done. Uh, I know I talked to one of the the councilmen a year ago, and he agrees with me. He said it's it's terrible. It's this it's but it's a state. So from our point of view, I think the city of Michigan City needs to attack the estate to get up here and, and not follow some book of chart. Come up here and do a study. Put the put the you know the the rubber down on the road and get the cameras and everything and see what's going on. Because I'm telling you the cannabis has really enhanced enlarged the traffic. And when if it's not the school coming out in the summer, it's all the summer people. And so it's constant. And I think before we do anything, that has to really be considered. And I, I want to make sure you all consider that when you're looking at this project. Thank you. Thank, thank you for your comments. Good evening. My name is Bridget O'Keefe. My family lives at 9 Muirfield Drive in St. Andrews. And I just wanted to take a moment just to bring you up to speed on some recent events. Um, last night, we had the opportunity to meet with Mr. McCree and we and his wife and as an attorney. And we appreciated the opportunity. Representatives from St. Andrews and Long Beach Point sat down and we thought we had a constructive conversation. That doesn't mean we agreed on everything, but it does mean that we agreed, we narrowed the issues because we saw that there was a number of positive about about this project that should be considered. We, um, as St. Andrews, we invested in a study, a stormwater study, because I think our primary issue is just to make sure because of the elevation change between that property and ours, that we've not had flooding and we wanna make sure we don't have flooding. And so we, um, we just gave a copy of the report uh, to um, the village attorney, the city attorney, and we've offered a copy of the report to the developer if they choose to go forward. And what we would like to do is if the project goes forward, we'd like to offer to sit down with our stormwater expert in the city and in Mr. McCree would like his stormwater expert there and just make sure that we're all on the same page. We're not we're not opposed on the stormwater issue. We just want to make sure that it's fully studied and that we all are in agreement. It's a science, it's the data. What is are we going to have flooding? If we're not, then that issue is put aside. So we wanted to clarify that because I think the statement that St. Andrews was opposed was a little bit um, confusing because we want to make sure our views are are heard, but we want to make sure that we keep the door open um, on the issues of concern, primarily stormwater. Um, we do have concerns about traffic, um, which I think Mr. Schreiber explained. But I think when we talked about it, I don't want to put words in Mr. McCree's mouth. We all want to make sure the streets are safe for the school and, and we want to make sure it works well. And we and his attorney explained why a traffic study wasn't done. And, and, I, and, um, and I understand that it didn't meet the warrant um, procedures for the INDOT uh, standards uh, because there was two standards. There was one is you had to have 95 units, which we don't have, or you had to generate 100 cars in a peak hour, which is not, we were told would not be happening. But when you add that to the increased enrollment across the street at Notre Dame, that does get you closer to 100 cars during the peak hour. And so what we would like to suggest is working with the city to just study this issue, even if this development doesn't go forward, it's still an issue we need to deal with because we want to make sure the school is safe. I know the principal is here from Notre Dame today because she was concerned about that. And then and then the last issue is um, is parking, which goes to short-term rental. If, you know, there's 40% of the units would be allowed to be short-term. And what the question is, will there be enough parking to make sure that it doesn't flow over into Long Beach Point? It won't affect St. Andrews. It'll affect Long Beach Point. So once again, we just wanted to let you know we did meet last night. We appreciated the opportunity for the conversation. We'd be more than happy to continue the conversation. If it goes forward, we have submitted our report. And if there's anything we can do to continue the conversation productively, we'd be happy to do so. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Mr. Chairman, board, thank you. My name is James J. Sexton. I live at 210 Lady Lane. The sewers in that particular area are woefully short. My home and yard has been flooding for almost 18 years. I had the sanitary district, I had the village engineer out to inspect 
the problems I was having. There was water already running off Birch Tree Lane down the lot at Long Beach Point, which runs right into my yard. I have many, many years of pictures for you. This goes back to 2008. When I approached the city about permits for this particular project, there was none. I'm amazed. You can see by the lot that it was not pitched properly. All of the gutters run down into the driveway. The sewer that's on Birch Tree Lane does not, is that the drain well. So my problem is not with this gentleman's development. My problem is, is with the reaction from the village or the city as to what they're going to do about that whole area. So if this project is going to go, then I suggest that the whole area be inspected to see what can be done to improve the water flow. Secondly, I don't know, we talked about uh, petitions. I don't know what your ordinance states for uh, notice for these meetings, but I'm on 210 Lady Lane, which is quite close to this development. And I've never received the notice to appear. Secondly, I'd like to know if there's been an environmental study done on the property. And thirdly, and most important, is the water issue. Is the city going to do a survey on this, or is St. Andrew's going to spend money to review the sewers? Okay, thank you for your comments. Appreciate I'd like a response. We appreciate the information. Any other public comment? Yeah. Hello, Scott Mellon, to Kenwood Place. Um, I'm not as familiar with this project as the, the neighbors are, but looking at a map, I can only see one undeveloped parcel next to Notre Dame. I assume that's where this would be. 40 townhouses doesn't sound like that much. I'm pretty sure townhouses have garages and driveways to absorb the cars therein and there's parking requirements. Uh, drainage is also uh, accounted for in development plans. Um, I'd also point out Route 12 used to be the highway between Chicago and Detroit. It can handle an incredibly high level of traffic flow, much higher than it handles now. And as we know, that area has been choked down to a single lane in each direction, which I find absolutely ridiculous, but there it is. I would also ask, so those are just general comments. Um, I would ask, is the new, I would ask, I would ask of the board to ask Skyler, since I can't talk to him directly, if the new lift station we're going to be putting into the Amtrak train would help relieve uh, the sewers in this area, because as I understand it, it's there to help relieve pressure on the system uh, to the east of, of Trail Creek. So in fact, these drainage issues are in fact being worked on by the city with a multi-million dollar uh, plan for sewage drainage and a new lift station at the Amtrak trains. Um, last note, the scuttlebutt in the real estate community, unfortunately, is that Michigan City is a difficult place to work with as a developer. So I'm discouraged to hear this developer being so discouraged. Now, a 30-day delay is not unreasonable or unusual in this kind of thing. But we all want to be pro-development, especially for housing. We know there's a deep need for residential housing in Michigan City. And I would just submit that we want to be as um, encouraging as possible and not to add unnecessary roadblocks to development, but do our best to facilitate development. And I'm pretty sure that's where the heart of the planning department lies. But, you know, a 40 unit townhouse development, you know, we're talking millions of dollars of new development and tax base. And we definitely want to encourage that type of development in Michigan City. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Any other public comment in person? Hi, uh, Ron Moles, 9511 Birch Tree Lane over at the uh, 
Long Beach Pike condominiums. Um, this is maybe more of a form of a question. It was brought up to the attention as far as, you know, um, there's this problem with uh, Airbnb and rental type thing situations. I don't know if there's any code or anything that prevents you get something like that, or if it's something uh, that has not been looked upon real closely. Since the advent of the internet, that's become a real popular thing. And we're just really worried about the complex turning into a money grab for weekend rentals, because that's something that's been happening in Long Beach now for quite a while too. And I don't know if there's anything in place to safeguard against that or the possibilities, but uh, that was a concern of ours. And also uh, the watershed. Uh, we do have a little standing water in our area and the uh, higher ground that that property sits on. We just want to make sure that that's not something that's going to be flowing down on us. So that was about it. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Any other public comment in person? Is there anybody online? Any other public comment? Okay, we'll close off the public comment and we'll move to commissioner comments. Any comments from the commissioners? Yeah. Yeah, I just also wanted to to kind of concur with some of the, the comments made about uh, you know, it, it was I don't want to say a little sad for me to see uh, to come up and, and talk about, you know, his um, frustration, I guess it would be a good word as to, you know, what's going on with him trying to uh, have this development move along. And I understand what people are saying in both sides of the issue, but I did, you know, that did make me feel, um, I don't want to say, uh, like I said, a little bit sad that, you know, we have someone who's coming here, wants to do something here in Michigan City. And he feels frustrated by the whole process uh, because we do want to see development happen here in Michigan City. Obviously, that bring more of a tax base for us um, here in the city. And um, so hopefully all these things get worked out and everybody has um, something of what they want. I don't think anybody's going to get everything that they want, but, you know, hopefully we get a chance to move forward and, and make sure we have a development or whatever you know comes out of this um, where both people can get you know some of the things that they want and we move forward uh with good development coming here to michigan city because we definitely need housing and i uh, also i'm hearing the, the comments re regarding um short-term rentals and um this was a topic that came up four years ago on the city council um and it didn't get much traction or much attention at the time um, a lot of people were, were saying, oh, that's just going to happen out here in Sheridan Beach. So the rest of the city didn't really uh, come out and, and voice their opinion about it. But now, you know, some of the people are coming out and voicing their opinion now. And I know short term rentals are happening as far south as 400 uh, out there at the road that runs by Walmart all the way to the beach. And I really wish at that time that people would have come out to voice their opinions then when we were trying to do something here in Michigan City to put some limitations some guardrails as to what you know the, the, a few of us thought we saw coming which is now here uh right here in our backyard um so i hope that uh more people will pay attention to what's happening in the, in the entire city i know it's a lot of people respond to what's happening in their backyard and they come out um but we really had a chance um to put some stipulations in for the short-term rentals and um to wrap this whole thing up i do want to see good development here in the city of course that's going to increase our tax base and everything like that we need that as a city uh every city is starving for revenue and um i hope like i said that the good things come out of all that we're dealing with i mean as a city councilman this is what i want to see this is why you become a member of the city council because you want to see your city move forward and hopefully we can get these things done and move forward. Thanks. Any other commissioner comments? Uh, yes, real quick. Uh, first of all, I'd like uh, the developer to have some patience and, and bear with us as best you can, as we've indicated before. Uh, second thing, I also think one lane highway 12 is ridiculous. 
The other problem we have coming up in Michigan City is the fence that's guarding our uh, double track is becoming a junkyard. And we got to have the South Shore take responsible for uh, responsibility for keeping that clean. There's tires, plastic, weeds, uh, all types of trash accumulating. And that has been since this spring. You know, they just opened it up. And we got a major problem. If you ever ridden the train through Gary, it's ugly. And that's what we're going to end up with if they don't do something about it. Thank you very much. I would like to make a comment uh, not to uh, prolong this meeting because I know everybody wants to get home and have dinner. Uh, but this is all uh, basically uh, Mr. Uh, Darby's uh, comments. Uh, you know, I kind of take a different approach. Uh, for anybody that wants to, uh, you know, rent out their home on a short term basis in the city of Michigan City, uh, there is a proper process that you go through. And that process, uh, I applaud. Uh, one, uh, because uh, a family of five that wants to travel on a short term budget, um, it really brings uh, light to. Uh, some families that don't really get a chance to come to Michigan City on a long-term basis like us all. And that's the one thing I, I really truly believe Michigan City is a special place. I, I, I do like the fact that a family of five can come visit on a short-term basis and see all the amenities uh, because there is not a lot of options uh, for that family of five. Um, and on the other note, uh, I do believe uh, if it is your property, uh, if you stay within the rules uh, of the ordinance, you should be able to do what you want. So uh, I just want to let everybody know where I sit on that. Uh, and I hope uh, Mr. McCree and other developers don't see this as a, uh, you know, a negative and that they see this as uh, Mr. Schuyler and the commission uh, commissioners. Uh, just wanted to uh, do the right thing and listen to everybody's, uh, um, uh, you know, thoughts on this project. And I hope Mr. McCree, uh, uh, you know, move forward. Thank you. And I'll make some last minute comments myself. We thank you all for coming. We thank you for your interest in our community. We are the plan commission. We have a certain jurisdiction. We don't have jurisdiction over the highway. We don't have jurisdiction over a lot of things, and we receive a lot of comments uh, from public comments say, well, I don't know about this, I don't know about that, but there are city ordinances, there are state statutes that we comply with. Uh, we are very interested in development and making good development for our developers and investors in the community for the, and for the protection of the neighborhood and the community here. So we look forward to working with all of you. And uh, the petitioner here owns the property. We had two petitions tonight. One was for a primary plat with a PUD overlay on it. So whether he goes forward with that plan and comes back to satisfy some of the, the particular requirements for the PUD and the plats, or wants to present another kind of a, a petition for a primary plat approval, please stay in contact with them. Please work. Let's all be neighborly and amicable as we work with them. Thank you for your representation and the interest uh, that you have in our community. Appreciate the commissioners and all of your interest in study. We spent a lot of hours working on this. All of these projects take time, months, and the staff, Mr. York and the staff there take hours and hours and days and trips and working through it. Uh, attorney Novak and attorneys know all these things that go into it. So we really appreciate the commissioners. We spent a lot of hours reviewing the plans and all the drawings and so forth. So we do want to make these things work for everybody, the investors, the developers, and the committee at large. But we thank you for your interest and your participation. Any last minute comments from the commission or a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Hey. Meetings adjourned. Thank you all.